tonight I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how you might want to upgrade the firmware on your new Keystone device. And as you can see, there's a little port here for a micro USB memory uh, device like this. This is an 8 gigabyte SanDisk. And in this tutorial, I'm going to use a, a little micro USB reader, which came with my Pi. And the way it works is you're going to slide this memory uh, stick on the top layer there. Here you can see me with the drive half inserted. So I'm going to finish that in. Notice how it's all the way in. And then we're going to plug it in like that and notice how it turns on. For most operating systems it'll actually pop up an auto mount. Here on my desktop and we're going to use a, a tool called Gparted which is part of most Linux distributions. And there is a way of formatting the, the memory stick on the Keystone itself, but I wanted to show you an alternative method in case you wanted to use that instead. So you're gonna to need to give the Gparted sudo uh, permission, sudo uh, permissions. And you're gonna to wanna to choose the, in my case, the SDA, that's the stick. Here we go. And we'll just start over. So what we're going to do is click on it and delete. Oops. Or first we gotta unmount it. Then we can delete it. And then we'll go ahead and apply. And now it's completely unallocated. So in, if you were to have a new one, this is what it would look like. So we're going to create a new partition primary and the file system is gonna be F32. Okay, and you're going to apply it. And that's it. You are now ready to go. So what I will do now is close Gparted and notice the volume instantly uh, showed up in my operating system and it is now ready for the next step, which is to download the firmware itself from Keystone. So there is a guide on guide.keystone.one and we are ready for the update the firmware via the micro SD card step. Now in this case, we want to download the Cypherpunk firmware, which uh, is supports Zcash. And we're gonna do the SD card update. And it is worth noting in March, 2025, Keystone released the critical security update 2.04 for the Keystone 3 Pro. Users should update based on their current device version this upgrade serves as a prerequisite for future upgrades and enabling seamless trans uh, transitions to the latest firmware and cross version compatibility. So depending on the device itself, when you first turn on the Keystone device, it'll tell you which uh, version of firmware you have. So depending on what you have, you may have to update to a initial version first and then to the latest after. But in this case, I have already upgraded, so I will just click on the um, this guy here because it's greater than or equal to two. And it's called keystone.bin or keystone3.bin. And it is important since I see how I already downloaded it, it renames it with the parentheses. You need to make sure that the name is keystone3.bin. So let me do that. Go here, let's open a terminal, and we're going to copy Keystone 3 bin. Actually, let me rename.
have it somewhere. Keystone three. We'll move that. And now we're going to move. So all this is going to do is it's going to move or rename the keystone file to what I want it to say. So it's going to be keystone3.bin. All right. And it's also going to move it into the drive itself. So notice how it says keystone3.bin in the jump drive. So at this point, the down the the only thing left to do is to verify the download and we'll do that next. All right, so to verify your checksum, we'll do a quick, you know, you're gonna grab your SHA-256 checksum hash, copy, and we'll just do a quick check here. Paste that. And now we're going to go to SHA 256 sum keystone. And let's compare the hash here. And if we do a quick by inspection here, everything is identical, which is what we want to see. So, verification done. Let me just get rid of that real quick. We are ready to insert the, dr the drive back into the Keystone so that we can upgrade the firmware. All right, so now I'm going to put this drive into the Keystone itself. And this is how it's gonna go. So you gotta open the flap and put it in like this and push until you hear it, the spring engage and close. Okay, so now with the Keystone device with the memory stick installed, I will log in and go to the next step. So let me log in real quick to my passcode. We're gonna go to the bottom about. I already have the latest version, but I'm gonna just show you how it works. Assuming you didn't, via micro SD card. And we're gonna update. Password again, all right. And this will take about five minutes or so. Once this is done, I will be right back. And you'll notice that when it's done, it just reboots. So now that we have our Keystone device ready to go, the next step is to connect it to our Zashi. So you open up your Zashi and on the top left corner, there's a Zashi with a little down arrow. That's actually a button, click that. And we're gonna connect hardware wallet. So instructions, unlock your keystone, um, tap the menu icon, tap the connect software wallet and select Zashi app and scan the QR code. So let me do that right now. All right, I'm gonna type in my code and go to the next step. So we're gonna hit the top right corner, connect software wallet and Zashi. And here's the code that we are going to scan. So on the bottom here, ready to scan. Confirm. All right. And that's it guys. The next step is to send us, uh, to send some Zek into your Keystone and you are ready to connect. And just so it's clear on how this works through Zashi, you can maneuver back to your hot wallet by clicking on the button on top here. Like that. But everything else works exactly the same.